What's up, Zox fam? And we're back with some more Dislike. Now, we're going to be getting into my top five R2s that I feel like players should be aiming for. Now, I know some of you guys are like, wait, Zox, we're aiming for R2s? Now, listen, you're eventually going to get to a point within this game where aiming for the newest character all the time isn't going to cut it, right? You're going to have things eventually that's going to be pretty much fulfilled uh, in terms of slotting different roles, right? You're not going to need to always be aiming for the newest unit. You're going to have to start aiming for copies and duplicates duplicates of units, especially when we're looking at R2s, because that opens up the door for a lot of your units to start giving you more value. So we're going to jump right into it, guys. Definitely make sure that you like subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the exclusive content. But let's go ahead and get right into it because we've got a lot to talk about. All right. Now, uh, the first unit that I actually want to emphasize now, these are all going to be characters that are not fusible. Um, and, you know, you have to obviously you know, kind of try your luck to get their their dupes. Uh, the very first one on my list, and this is in no particular order, is going to be Ali. I think Ali's R2 is actually extremely powerful because this takes him from being a unit that can kind of sort of do 16 really, you know, really well to absolutely being a monster at doing 16. Now, what exactly is his R2? His R2 is the Salvic Judgment's invincibility and recovery is extended to two turns. Now, this might not seem like much, but this literally takes this character from being able to so like I said, being able to kind of sort of do 16 to absolutely decimating it. And this is in terms of survivability, right? Now, invincibility and recovery, this is also something with a two-turn uh, limit on it. That's going to be something that also is going to be really, really good if you decide to use him in PvP. And any other piece of content that you use him in, it's just more sustainability and this one thing, believe it or not, opens up the door so much for this character to be useful to you. So a lot of the times I know and I see people that are trying to use Ollie, but he's not as consistent with, you know, keeping the team alive. And a lot of that does have to do with his R2. His R2 takes that invincibility really and gives you more of an opportunity to have longer turns or time periods in between you getting that unit's turn for them to be able to survive to say, you know, get their turn. So even if you get stunned, it gives you an extra turn of invincibility for you to be able to sustain yourself. So I do feel like Ali's R2 is extremely important just to be able to open up that door for you to be able to do things like Kronos more efficiently. Um, um, so I definitely had to throw him on this list right now. Number two, we got Gaius's R2. Gaius's R2, in my opinion, is actually very, very broken because what it does, uh, it gives him a new effect to his Thunderstorm uh, and God King Thunderstorm. So in normal mode, he gives accuracy of 20% to the entire party. And then in God King mode, he gives a crit rate buff of 20%. So not only are you getting massive DPS parameters from him, he gives himself his own crit rate buff, his own accuracy buff, but then he's able to then become a support and he spreads that to the entire party while still giving shield still giving uh still doing buff block still doing seer of course nuking so there's just so much that he offers that i feel like his r2 is actually worth aiming for because when you're looking at accuracy it just means you're landing all your stuff and then the crit rate buff means that your entire party overall is going to be doing more damage so when you know you're kind of looking at those things to kind of open up more to a unit that's already giving you a lot, I definitely would say that this R2 is going to be one of them, like 100 percent, right? Now, the next R2 coming in at number three that I feel like is super, super important is going to be actually on Yun Chuan, right? Now, a lot of people don't realize how broken this R2 is, but this R2 literally makes this dude open up so much so whistling stance passive morph so whistling stance passive the condition of summoning screamer to assist changes from when enemies with third eye still are attacked by yuntron to when they are attacked by anyone now originally when yuntron came out that was kind of the dilemma with him was that when you're using him if you don't have him resoed only time the third eye seal would proc is if it was him being attacked right so if he was the one or he was the one attack, attacking sorry if he was the one attacking then it would proc but now any of your allies attack anyone with the third eye still uh third eye seal which keep in mind this is an aoe ability you're going to also be able to get a follow-up attack now the other thing that's really amazing about yun chuan which some people don't realize is that he also with the third eye still a bit uh, passive can follow up on bleed procs those do count as ally attacks so he 
is able to do a lot of damage. I got this dude doing work in Fafnir, got him doing work in Sentinel Hunt. And even in just like generalized PvE content, the dude like does really well in like Calamity Island even because he also has so many follow-up attacks. And I will say for those that are trying to perfect or get better at their Fafnir runs, this dude really, really is a world different when you have him at R2. Like that is just undeniable. The dude becomes an absolute monster because it really is super, super huge um, for just potential overall DPS by time the fight ends. Like Yun Chuan literally becomes one of the highest DPS outputters because he's just hitting so often when you're looking at the follow-up attacks that he's able to do. So again, I will say this is definitely one of my favorite R2s um, that I've gotten on my account so far. And I would definitely recommend this one if anyone was looking to push for those R2s right now coming in at number four the next one and it's kind of ironic how this works because everybody's like right near each other uh, is actually going to be Clara now Clara's R2 I actually really think is really important because of how her abilities um, have been adjusted since she was nerfed um, and obviously she's not a bad unit by no means I still think that she's a game defining and game changing unit but with her R2 what is it doing it's changing the hem of life and um, the immunity is going to be extended to two turns now you are initially going to have a one turn immunity and one turn immunity kind of sucks because that means like for example when she uses her s3 right this is usually like you typically have her going first or at least you would try to have her go first um but usually you know she dispels you get the one turn immunity and then if your allies go and they hit the immunity is gone right away whereas when they get that immunity now they'll be able to have an additional turn of them being able to have the enemies hit them with whatever debuffs or whatever it is to prevent them from you know essentially dying or being debuffed or stunned or whatever it might be right so this is a super super small it seems like at first but it ends up being a really huge thing that gets added into her kit when you're talking about extra coverage because if you're not using units like gabby for example who innately has i think a two turn immunity um it's going to be really nice for uh, clara to have that healing within the two turn immunity to really make sure that your team is being sustained properly and it's not leaving them open susceptible to stuns or any types of debuffs right after the fact of her just cleansing everything so her r2 they kind of sort of made it feel like i would say somewhat necessary for her for her to be able to do what she needs to do now the next r2 that i think is actually really really good and a lot of people don't even realize that this is the r2 that this unit has is going to be Ahmed's. his r2 is actually really really good on a general standpoint when you're not only talking about the pve content that he's good at but even in pvp now we're going to talk about this right now his r2 is going to be warm harmonics passive each supporting song stat grants two speed now a lot of people might not think that that's ridiculous but keep in mind supporting song if we click this uh grants plus four percent base attack and plus two speed obviously at r2 uh, and it's a max of 15 stacks so this means if he hits any fight at any point he can get anywhere which i'm just gonna throw the halfway number just about anywhere from almost 30 because that's 30 30 30 speed additional speed that he can give a character at max stacks to half of that number say 14 to 15 speed that literally makes a massive difference in your rotation that can make or break whether or not within a fight if you're losing you now are speeding up your units during the duration of the actual fight to make you get your turns quicker and this is something that i feel like for a lot of people that are lacking in that area of speed not only are you getting massive heals you're getting uh countering to disease and hp ceiling decrease you're not now you're getting the attack increase that he gives as well but also a speed increase this is an absolutely ridiculous ridiculous r2 for a unit um and again it's these small ones that don't seem like much but they open up the door for your units to be able to do more and i think that that's kind of the key point in the value of the r2s for certain units because again the entire goal with units that you're picking is to try to pick units that are going to give you more utility so the same thing kind of would go into the resuing of these characters is what units are going to give you more value as you you're pushing through the content and a lot of the times it's the same characters you already have um, that are going to give you that extra value because they're already offering you so much now again 
The supporting song with the speed increase, like I said, is super, super nice. Um, I think that that is like a absolutely amazing like skill for him to have. Um, but I will say uh, outside of that, I got to give some honorable mentions because there are some other ridiculous uh, R- R2s that I feel like, you know, again, some people are like, wait, that didn't make the list. Well, listen, I- I'm going to mention some. OK, now one is going to be uh, definitely Queen Mother's because Queen Mother actually when she gets her R2 uh, Mount Kulan's blessing uh, and increases the uh, the AP boost that Jin Yaw receives by 50 percent. And at the end of the turn, it dispels one debuff. So this allows her to be able to cleanse more efficiently which makes her absolutely even more broken for a pep so that's something that i definitely was like i I wanted to put her on there but when i was looking at it i was like okay like you know it's kind of hard to put her over these other units Uh, now another one that i definitely want to throw on the list is hyde i feel like he's definitely an honorable mention because this r2 open opens up the uh capability of him being able to do wave clearing content now how much of a a necessity is this it's not like the biggest priority or necessity um right away but i definitely think that if you are trying to utilize hyde in any pve content at all this is definitely something that is required to make sure that he's not having to reset his breath of the deep stacks and he can keep those passives that's that damage reduction and additional attack that he's going to be getting right so five percent attack per stack and three percent damage reduction per stack uh, and this is a max of 50 stacks right so it just allows him to be able to carry that over from wave to wave and you're dealing with the same hide um, and not having him reset and my last honorable mention i have to throw in here too is is sally okay because sally has a really ridiculous uh r2 and it changes her universal um to being able to not only hp balance but it also then heals um which is broken i i just want to say that that is a absolutely broken r2 and it completely changes the game of how she's used and it's the first piece to the puzzle that changes the game for her so yeah that's going to be pretty much the entire listing for the top five and with my honorable mentions i'm intrigued to know who your top five are because again this is very much so subject to my own personal experience and opinion with these characters who that I felt like has been like super super pivotal to my account um, especially as I've gotten rezos into them so let me know who your top five are in the comment section down below guys Uh, if you have any additional questions also don't be afraid to ask I'll try to get to you guys as much as I possibly can Um, but I appreciate you guys stay blessed stay charged up and I'll catch you guys in the next one